Don't you just hate that? You get everything ready to go to use market replay data using the playback connection on NinjaTrader. You're all set. You hit the button, nothing happens. Aren't you sick of that? And then you, you know what happens? You stop using the playback connection because it's just too much trouble. But it's too important. You need to know it. We're going to help you. Lots of advice and tips and tricks coming up right now. Come on. All right, so we're going all out and we're calling this the ultimate guide because we're going to make this everything that you need to know about NinjaTrader's playback connection and using replay data, including some things about replay data that you may not know or you may have often questioned. So we're going to talk about what the playback connection is, what the difference between streaming data and replay data, what is historical data, uh, and so there's some misunderstandings about the difference between historical data and playback data. We're going to clear that up for you. So we're going to talk about setting up the playback connection, downloading replay data. So there's a couple different ways you can do it. Um, and we're going to go over both of those. We're going to then talk about using the connection and connecting the playback connection in NinjaTrader to our newly downloaded data, okay? And then we're going to talk about some tips and tricks, some troubleshooting things that you might not have thought of as you're trying to work through using the playback connection, okay? So let's get started. Let's talk about how we get the data, okay? So data comes from the exchanges. There's a, uh, the CME buildings, okay? So the, the trades are taking place inside the exchanges. That's where whenever you place a trade, they ultimately end up at the exchange. Somebody else uh, is, is also placing a trade, uh, a trade, and it ends up there, and you guys end up trading uh, at some point, okay? So the data is flowing out of the exchanges, and the, the flow of data is managed by these streaming data providers that we all use. You may have heard of Continuum or CQG or Rhythmic. Uh, there's a bunch of them. Okay, so those are the ones that you'll typically hear of for futures trading. But this is the way for all, all markets have, have a data providers. Okay, so the information is just streaming out of the, uh, the exchanges. And then uh, it goes, it comes to us through our NinjaTrader platform. And with that data, we are able to then see it and see price movement. And in order to make this more efficient, our charts are built with this streaming data. Okay. Now, what happens is we start recording this data. Now, we don't record it. Fortunately, NinjaTrader servers record all the data for us so that we can then provide it to the traders that need to use it on their NinjaTrader platform. So you don't have to, although you can, you don't need to, and it's really not recommended, to record it yourself. Okay, so you can download any recorded data that you want and use it, and then when you're finished with it, just get rid of it because then you can always just download it again, okay? So what is the playback connection? So you may have gone up here and you may have opened the connections and you've seen uh, a, several different connections. One of them is playback, okay? So what you need to do is you, you go and you open the connection, playback, and then you go to continue. And then this little, uh, this little window opens up kind of like a little VCR, okay? So if you think of it that way, it's just how you begin to use the data, okay? So this is your launch point. Now, before we go much further, let's clear up the difference between historical data and market replay data, okay? That's, that's a big gray area for people sometimes, especially when you're first getting started. Now, the term historical data 
is a very general term. It also can be very specific. Okay, so we have some data that is called historical data, but using it as a general term, it's uh, market replay data can be considered historical data. And I see how this gets very confusing, okay? It's very confusing right from the start. So think of it this way. Think of it that Ford created a truck and they named it truck, okay? Now, there are lots of different manufacturers and lots of different trucks with lots of different truck names out there, okay? And they all fall under the category of truck. But if Ford named a truck, truck, well, okay, so now this truck falls under truck, okay? So that's kind of think of historical data that way, all right? So historical data is generally used, you can use it for daily, weekly, monthly, and even tick data, that, but it's static, okay? It shows the past prices, but doesn't include any of the order flow information, the live market action. Okay, so, at, and for most of us traders, that's very important, particularly day traders, okay? It's good for analysis. Um, it's great for analyzing past market movements, back testing, um, and then kind of looking at longer term trends, okay? So it's good for that. Again, not great for day traders. Typically, um, if you're gonna if you're gonna test some automated strategies, depending on the strategy and how it's triggered, you know, it may be fine for that. But again, it's more for a, a longer period, generalized look at the market. Okay, now replay data, very dynamic. Market replay data includes the order flow. Okay. It allows you to take a recording of the data, which is the data that, that we provide and that NinjaTrader provides, just plug in that recording and then replay it as if it were running live in real time. So you can do real time simulations, um, which provides a more realistic, now it's not perfect, but it's much more realistic than historical data. So, it creates an environment where you can practice your trading, which for our traders is very important. We have a very strong edge in our trading, knowing meaning that we know with a high degree of probability where price is going to stop and change directions. But you must be prepared to execute. And that's where practice comes in, which is why the playback utility is so important to us and many other traders. So it's, it, and, and we do uh, a lot of, man, all of our trading is, is manual, okay? And, and so we can refine our skills and even you can start refining strategies and, and just improve your decision-making skills using replay data. Now, how much different is it? So let's look at this. This is, uh, a historical data chart. So let's look at this carefully. So this all happened on this date and at this time, okay? So the points of data that we have for this are the open price, the high price, the low price, and the close price. We also have some other information, volume and such. But for building bars, we have four points of information. Okay, and that's during that one minute. For the next minute, four points of information. Okay, so only four points per minute. So let's look at market replay data. Let's look at it a little bit more carefully. So again, same date, same time, but look how many points of data. This is how the data flowed in to the chart as it's coming in, and these are milliseconds, okay? Each one of these is a millisecond. We're still on the 850 bar. You see how much better and more refined the data is on the market replay data. 
for every bar, whether it's a one-minute bar, a five-minute, 15-minute, one hour, for every bar on historical data, there's four points of data. For every minute on a uh, uh, on using market replay data, there's a thousand points of data. Okay, so you can see how there's a, a much higher granularity using market replay data than using historical data. They both have their place, but you want to make sure you're using the right data for the right kind of testing, okay? Okay, so where do we download the data from? Where do we get it from to use with the playback connection? All right, so let's go over downloading replay data and how you're going to get it on your computer so that you can use it with the playback connection. All right, so here's NinjaTraders Control Center. First thing you want to do is make sure that go to your connections, that you're not connected to any other data feed. And if you are, you're going to want to disconnect from that data feed, okay? Then we're going to go to our playback connection. Now, this is going to pop up. I'm going to go back over this in just a minute. But this pops up where you can get your data, okay? But we're going to skip that for just a second, and then we'll come back to it. I'm just going to go to continue. And then this brings up the playback utility, okay? And this is where it all happens, and this is what I'll be working with. But that's how you get there, but you want to make sure that your uh, other data is disconnected, okay? Now, let's go back to this. I'm going to show you there's two different ways that we can download the data, and I'm going to show you where this data goes, okay? So we're going to... Again, go to playback. Now, a couple things to notice here. Up here is the historical data that's stored on the machine, okay, on this computer. And remember, you can store an awful lot of historical data because remember, you've only got four points of data plus some other, you know, volume and some other uh, uh, information, but it, they're very tiny little files, so you can put a whole bunch of historical information on your, on your computer. Conversely, with Market Replay, not quite as much because the files, as you might imagine, can get kind of big. So they don't, and, and they don't just have level one data. They also contain level two data. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So, um, obviously, I clicked here on Market Replay, and it shows that I have no Market Replay data. So, what I want to do is I want to go down here to get Market Replay data. And let's say I want to play back a few different instruments on a particular day. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go down here. I'm going to select, let's say it's the ES, and I want to download... Uh, what happened on the 9th, okay? So then I'm going to click download, and I'm going to wait. Until that download is done, I'm going to sit there and wait. Then I'm going to go to, let's say I want to do the GC1224, same day. I'm going to download the data, and I'm going to wait for that to get done. And let's say then I want to do... The NQ download that, and then let's say I want to do the YM. and hit download. So you can see, okay, so now I've got four different instruments, uh, and I, if I click on the instrument up here under Market Replay, okay, so when you when it opens, it has a plus beside it. So I'm going to click it. It opens it. Now I show those four instruments. So this says, okay, I have data for those four instruments. Until I click on the instrument, it won't tell me which data I have. I might have a whole bunch of days in here under this particular contract. 
But as it is, I just have the one day for this one. I click on it here, got the same day, same day, same day. Okay, we all, we've got four instruments on a single day. So I can hit continue now. You can see how that can be quite cumbersome if you want a lot of days of a lot of different instruments. So there is an alternative to downloading data, okay? So we can even, uh, we're gonna close the playback. Now, let's go here, and this is part of the essential add-on suite that you can get from us. There'll be a, a link down at the bottom for the essential add-on suite. Uh, we have a few thousand users that uh, like to use it. Uh, and uh, specifically for this reason. So we can go right down here to replay data manager and we can, now we have a couple of different ways of looking at data and downloading data. Here's a tree. So let's, so let's go to the ES and we're going to expand the ES and we're going to go to the 09 contract. See, we have all of 2024 there. We'll go and we just downloaded, I think it was the 9th was the day that we downloaded. But let's say we wanna do all of August. So we're just gonna select all of August for the ES. And now we're gonna to go to the GC. We'll go GC and all of August. Now we can pick individual days if we want to, but let's just do all of August. Now we're gonna to go to the NQ, we'll pick this contract, 2024, and all of August, and I think we did the YM also. So we're going to go here, go to this contract, and all of August. So instead of in the amount of time it takes to, to download just four days, we've now got 32 days, or 30, yeah, 32 different uh, days and, and with over four different instruments, okay? And we could just hit the button and you're done, okay? And just let it start downloading. And uh, depending on how many other people are hitting the server at the time, uh, it will depend on the, the speed, but it's generally pretty fast. All right, so now we've got all of our data downloaded and uh, we can go ahead and clear the download. Now, we can also go and download instruments this way. All right, so we can go in here and then we can select, uh, let's just pick an instrument. We're gonna add that. Now, I'm gonna check it and say, okay, this is the instrument that we wanna download data for. Because you can go in and you can add another instrument and create a list but maybe we don't want to, add, on this particular download, we don't want to download data for the YM. Let's just do the ES. So we'll go to ES and let's just go back to the middle of last month and then today. And then, so we can select it by date rather than using the tree selector if that's the way you prefer to do it. A lot of people like to do it that way. All right. Now, we can go and we can look at the files and not just look at the files that we have uh, on our computer now, but we can actually manage the files. Typically, you're gonna have to go to the folder that is inside of NinjaTrader. Now, this is where your data lives. I'm gonna talk about this in a minute. This is where your data lives inside of NinjaTrader, okay? It's inside this folder. And so most people, if, you, if you're going to manipulate the data or move the data or delete the data, you have to do it through Windows. This way you can go and we can select the ES, uh, the GC downloaded all those files, the NQ same days, YM the same days. Now we can delete either individual files or we can delete the whole folder. Okay, so that's, that's an, a way that you can manage your files in our downloader. So I mentioned I was going to uh, go over the folder structure so that you could find the Windows folder where the replay data files live. So here's the path 
on your computer to where Ninja Trader and our downloader will load the replay data files onto your computer so that they're in the right place and ready to be used when you're ready to uh, connect to the playback connection. So this is the typical folder. Now we do have some people who have expressed uh, that they have trouble because the files don't seem to be available. They download the files and they're just not there. And what uh, we've come to find out for a, lo a lot of these people is that the files have ended up somewhere else. And if you've incorporated OneDrive, uh, there's a chance that the files went directly to your OneDrive uh, account uh, rather than residing on your computer. So that can be... now. I don't use OneDrive, and, and uh, so I've never had this issue, but I know we've had, uh, many of our traders have had the issue. So somebody uh, contacted NinjaTrader and found out what to do about that to fix it. And so I'm not going to go over that here, but there is a PDF down below in the description where if you are having a problem with the files not ending up where they're supposed to be, you can uh, go ahead and download this or go to this uh, link and uh, it'll take you to a file with specific instructions on how, how to fix that issue with OneDrive and making sure that the files end up where they're supposed to be. All right, now we've got data on our computer. It's in the folder where it's supposed to be. We've identified and looked to make sure it's there. And now we're ready to do some playback using market replay data. So again, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to go right up here. We're going to go to our playback connection. That's going to pull up this window. Now we already know we have the data that we want to use. So we're going to hit continue. And we have this player that's it's pretty much like a, a VCR player or DVD player. VCR tells my age, doesn't it? So this, this little player right here has actually more going for it than initially meets the eye. There's a little bit more we can do with this player. Um, but initially what you want to do is you want to start with a beginning and end date. Now, I mentioned to you, okay, we downloaded data and it's on our computer and we're ready to go. But what if I forgot which data I downloaded for which instrument? Well, just click on here and go to show available data, and that'll pull up the window that we just went past to get to the to get to the playback player. And we can look over here and just click on the instrument, and it'll tell us which instrument and which uh, which days of which instrument are available for uh, uh, that we have data for. Okay. So let's say uh, we've got the ES and we've got the 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, and 9th. Okay, so those are, those are the days maybe I want to play. So we can go ahead and close that. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to select the 5th. And then I'm going to go here and I'm going to select the 9th, although they were already selected. And the first thing I'm going to do before I do anything else is I'm going to go ahead and hit play. Okay, and that's going to start the data and load the, those days of data and start the player. And what I want to do is I want to look here to make sure that it's playing and look down here to make sure that the data is populating the charts. Okay, and, and it is on both of these circumstances. So let's go ahead and pause it and say, I want to, you know, I don't really care. This is at midnight, right? Midnight and 30 seconds. Say, I don't want to, I don't want to play back all the way to 930 so that I can start using it. Okay. So there are a couple of ways that we can move to a, a time that you want to analyze or you want to practice. So we can just go here and we can select go to. 
we already know that we're started on the fifth. But let's say, okay, we want to change that. Let's change it to the sixth. And I want to change it to 9 a.m. We hit OK. Now, everything's loaded up. It's at 9 p.m. It's ready to go. But it's not on the sixth, is it? So when you want to change a date, do it from here. Don't do it from the go-to, okay? So we want to change it on the start here. Now, when I hit play, it's still not going to go to 930. The first time I click it, it takes it to the 6th. And now that I'm on the 6th, now I can go to, or 9 a.m. That's what I had before. Now I can go to 9. All right, so now it's set to the 6th. This is where a lot of people get confused and they feel like ninja, the, the, the playback just doesn't work. There's some very simple things that you can do to get playback to work the way you think it's supposed to work. All right, so make sure that you take some notes. Particularly, I'm going to get to some troubleshooting, and this was a troubleshooting tip here, but this is, this is just a tip on getting it to work the way you think it's supposed to work. Okay, now we're ready to hit the play button. And again, I'm going to look at 9 o'clock. I'm going to look down here. All right, I have data flowing. Looks like everything's good. So at this point, we've got one chart playing an ES instrument on the days that I've specified. And that's really all there is to using the playback connection with market replay data. However, many of you have found there tends to be more to it than that. Just like the video I showed you at the beginning with the bikes, the BMX racers. You think you're all ready to go and you hit the button and nothing happens. And we're going to talk about that here in just a minute. Now it's time for some advanced tips on using the playback connection with replay data so you can stop having some of the problems that you've probably had in the past. All right, first tip, download just the dates specific to the instrument that you plan to have open in your workspace and do not have any other instruments open in that workspace. You need to make sure that we simplify your workspace to the point where it can't get confused looking for data that maybe doesn't exist on your computer for replay. Your workspace is not necessarily all that smart and is going to know that, yeah, just because you want to replay, say, the ES, but you have five other instruments in your workspace, it's not going to want to just replay the ES necessarily. Sometimes you can get away with it. Most times that will cause an issue. So if you have a workspace that looks something like this, and even though you saw that we just downloaded uh, information for like four instruments earlier, um, we don't have information for a lot of the instruments that are on this workspace. So even though I want to replay just the ES, if I try to replay this data for this workspace for the ES, there's a real good chance nothing's going to happen when you hit the play button. We want to open a workspace with just the instruments that you want to test or practice and with just the, just the data that you need for that session. All right, next tip. So maybe you've used playback connection and replay data for a while and everything seemed to be going okay and suddenly you can't get it to work anymore. You don't know why. 
there's a good chance it's because you've collected and stored an awful lot of replay data. Now, those files can get pretty darn big. So I ran into this problem many years ago, and I, I just couldn't figure out what was going on. But So I started deleting data, just getting rid of old data that I wasn't using. And then I found out at some point there is a limit to the folder and nobody really knows what that limit is, but if you overload the folder uh, that the data is in, it can start slowing things down. So a good idea is to uh, open up the folder, go to replay data, check it, and see if there's a bunch of data in here. So these are just the ones we downloaded earlier. Um, and uh, But... A lot of times this is just stuffed full of data. Now, you can do a couple of things. You can either just go ahead and delete the data, uh, you know, individually. You can do a global delete, you know, and delete everything. Or you may want to save this data so that you can use it again later. And then you want to just move it back into this folder when it's time to use it. So what I like to do is go to uh, the database folder and I can just rename this and we'll just call this replay data uh, to save. Okay, so now there is no replay folder so we can just go create one. So we'll create a new folder and we'll call it replay and now you have an empty replay folder that if you know you're you're having trouble and you don't want to delete it all but you want to test and maybe see if that's your problem you can easily create move the move all those files create a new folder and then test it now you may want to restart NinjaTrader after you do this because it's still it's going to get really confused looking for um, the uh, replay folder, and it's actually over here and got renamed. So that could confuse NinjaTrader. So restart NinjaTrader if it's running when you do that. Um, and that could be very helpful and make sure that things go more smoothly for you. All right, for those of you that want to do some uh, forward testing rather than just uh, practicing or, or looking at an individual day, but you want to do some forward testing over many multiple days, weeks, or months, and you just want to let it run uh, to see the results of, of the test, uh, there comes a time where you may uh, run into an issue with expiration dates for particular contracts and then the start date of the next contract. So in future trading, there's no definitive line on when you can start trading a contract. So we may be have, have collected a lot of data on a contract that not most people are not trading yet, you know. So um, you want to get the most liquid times. You want to get as close to the contract expiration time and then the beginning of the new contract uh, time uh, when that other one expires. So you want you don't want to have overlapping dates necessarily. You can create what's called a continuous contract in NinjaTrader. Um, and in fact, you do it outside of NinjaTrader is how you create it. And this will help you to just go ahead and forward test many days, weeks, or months in advance without worrying about which contract it's your strategy or whatever should be trading on. So you can do this. You can just check up up here at the top. I've got a link to a video that we did on creating continuous contracts. You can also check down here at the bottom. I'll put a link in the descriptions on how to go about creating your own continuous contracts for whichever instruments you want to. So when doing testing in uh, playback connection with market replay data, it's not necessary if you have a specific strategy that's firing when the, it's, the playback is running. 
it's really not necessary in most circumstances that you run it at normal speed. There may be times where you want to run things a bit faster. And what, what's happening here is all of the data is actually loading. Let me show you. So we've got all of the data actually loading in, in real time. You see how it's moving just exactly the way it came into the market. Okay. So then we can speed it up and we can, we can make the bars produce faster. And if we get to a certain point where we're going really fast, then it'll start skipping bars. Well, up to a point, it's, it's not really skipping the data. It's actually developing each bar, but we don't see it because it can't print that fast and move that fast. So it looks like it's very jumpy and that it has, has moved over from using the fine granularity replay data to using historical data, you know, just printing the way the bar looked, high, low, open, and close. But that's not really the case. It's actually processing all the data, and it does it very quickly. So it doesn't affect your strategies. Now, I say that with a caveat to a point. Some strategies uh, may start to struggle when it gets to be 500x or max speed. Um, others may do just fine. So you'll have to test it and try it out for yourself. But for the most part, doing it at a higher speed is, is a much more efficient way to work with market replay data. When I uh, <clears throat> practice or test things, personally and generally, I know specifically the date and time that I want to work on and I want to test. So for me... There's a, see, there's a couple of different ways to go and jump to a particular time and date in playback, okay? So for me, I like to use the go to. So I want, I'm going to right click anywhere in the player and I'm going to click go to. Now I showed you this earlier, but it bears repeating, okay? So what I've got here is this says 04. But this says O2, okay? So this is, this is a point where a lot of people get confused. And they want to try to change the, and then jump to a time on O4. But it's still on O2, okay? So this, this, can, this can complicate things for people sometimes. Now, sometimes it jumps, sometimes it doesn't. So the best thing to do if you want to jump to a particular date is go ahead and set that date. Well, this is Sunday, so let's set it to 05. Now, let's make sure we're at 05 here, and now we set our jump to time. Okay, this is, I say, 50% of the people that have problems with, with uh, the playback, this is where it starts. Things just don't work exactly like they thought they were going to, so they end up quitting, which may have been, I mean, I get a lot of people say, oh, I, I hate playback. It's just too frustrating. I can't use it. Well, I'm a professional trader, so I don't really have a choice. I had to figure out how to use it. This is, this is how I make my living. So it was, I was desperate and needed to know how to use it. So I worked at it and worked at it, worked at it, which is why I finally found some of these tips and tricks and troubleshooting, which I'm going to talk about later, um, uh, strategies, okay? So the go-to for me, I mean, I'll do it down to the second. I mean, I might know that I want to go to the the nine o'clock and two minute point. So I might put in nine o'clock and 50 seconds, uh, nine minute, nine o'clock, one minute and 50 seconds. I might do that so that I'm ready. So when it hits the open of the bar at the 902, 
and I wanted to see something specific at the open of that bar. So I get very specific about where I want to start the replay, okay? So that's how I do it, uh, but there is another way. The other way is with this slider. Now, I don't particularly care for this slider for a number of reasons. It, it really, if you look up here as I slide, look how far it jumps in the, in the date and time on each tiny little increment. Now, let me tell you what's happening here. What we have loaded right now, we've told the playback utility that we want to load the data starting here and ending here. So we've loaded five days of data for this, for this chart. This line here represents all five days of, those, of that data. So it's all squeezed in and condensed. So we're going to have a hard time zeroing in. You can see, watch the date. You can see I can, I can move it just very little, and it jumps from the 6th to the 7th. So that was a whole day, right, in just this much in here. So there's a, there's a problem with trying to get very specific. Now, if you, again, just want to generally get to a certain area, uh, and slide it, and you're close enough to start your your testing, okay, then that's fine. Now, let me show you a way we can make this a little bit more sensitive, okay? Make it a little bit uh, more accurate as far as being able to zero in on a particular date and time. First of all, we've got five days of data in the chart. Let's make it just one day. So we're going to go now to the fifth. I'm going to hit the play button, and now it's going to reload and have only, it's going to first, it's going to unload all the other data and then reload just the fifth. So now this bar is only 24 hours. So we can go through it here and notice how much smaller the incremental jumps are here. Now, we can make that even smaller. So we have this condensed line, right? This is 24 hours. But what if I did this? What if I stretch this out across my entire screen? Now watch it. Look how much smaller. Now, again, this is now 24 hours. But it's been expanded so that we can get more more uh, timestamps in there. So I can move it two or three minutes at a time where before it was two or three hours at a time, okay? So this is one way you can use the slider to get very close to pinpointing the time that you want to uh, practice or test. All right, this also bears repeating. Uh, when you change a date, start or end date, and let's change this to the second. The first click on this arrow now unloads the data that was originally loaded and reloads the new start and end date. Okay, so that's the first thing that happens. So you notice I clicked the arrow, but nothing happened. And I know many of you become extremely frustrated I clicked the arrow, nothing happened. I don't know why that's doing that. That's because you have to click it twice. The first time you click the arrow, it unloads and loads the new data. The second time you click the arrow, it starts playing the data. Some of the tips I just gave you were to help you avoid the need for troubleshooting. Yet sometimes... We still have issues with NinjaTrader, and we got to try to figure it out uh, so that we can use the playback and the market replay data efficiently. It's too important not to. Don't give up on it, okay? So one of the first tips uh, or one of the first things to check when you're troubleshooting is to make sure that you have only 
the workspace open that you intend to be practicing or testing and no other workspaces. So you, you look at this, you go, okay, well, there's only one workspace open. This is all I can see. When in fact, there's a lot of workspaces open here. But this is the only one that's active. If you go up here to workspaces and you open it, the active workspace has the green next to it. All of these other workspaces with these gray boxes next to them are open, but they're open in the background. So what happens when you're trying to work in your current workspace and you hit the play button and nothing happens, it just grays out and you don't know why. Well, the chances are it's trying to load data into these other open workspaces and the data maybe doesn't exist. So you're creating a problem for yourself by having all of these other workspaces trying to fill with data. Things can easily lock up. So what you want to do is make sure you close each of those and then have only the workspace. So all you got to do is hide the workspace you're working in. So all you have to do is highlight it, click close, and yes, and go to each one and close all these workspaces. So to expand on that same logic a little bit, make sure the workspace that you have open only has the instruments in it for which you know you downloaded the data for the specific days that you're testing or practicing. You may have downloaded a lot of data for certain instruments, but you didn't get that specific data for the day that you're testing, okay? So you need to make absolutely sure. I prefer to only have whatever it is that I'm testing and I need for testing to be open in a particular workspace. So, you know, we, we saw that Earlier on, we downloaded four instruments. I deleted the entire folder for one of them, so I only have three instruments that have data uh, stored on this computer right now. But I have, I don't know, a bunch of different instruments in this market watch window. Uh, I have an instrument here that I didn't load any data for. I do have this instrument here, okay? So I know I have some data for that instrument but I don't have any data for this instrument. Okay, so now if I hit replay, some of these are will populate, some won't. They might, they might not. Chances are Ninja's going to get confused and it's just going to lock up. Okay, so ideally you want to make sure that only the workspace, you only have in the workspace what you need for your practice session. So to recap, no other workspace is open and only the windows open that you need to have open for your practice or test session. And this has got to be one of the worst feelings in the world when you get everything all set up and ready and you're ready to start testing or practicing uh, using playback uh, with market replay data, you've got everything ready to go. You load up your chart, you load up all your indicators, you're ready to practice. You click the button and the panel turns gray and sits there. So you wait and you wait and you wait. Ah, one more reason not to use NinjaTrader's playback connection, even though it's important. So here's what you do. First of all, if data doesn't start moving in the first five or 10 seconds, it's probably not going to. All right, so the first thing you want to do, go in here, disconnect, playback, and reconnect, playback. I spent a lot of time waiting for this to refresh, and it uh, oftentimes never does. So I've gotten to a point where if it doesn't start right away, I disconnect, reconnect, and start over, and then come in here again and hit play and see if I get anything, okay? The next thing to do, if that doesn't work, 
Take all the indicators off your charts. You want just a clean, fresh chart. Again, at, like I mentioned before, you can end up causing yourself problems by having too many things that could potentially go wrong. So we want to make sure that the data is flowing into the chart. Hit play. Okay, the box turned black. It's ready to go. We hit the play button. And now we've got data flowing. Now, go back in and add your indicators. You can either add all of them through a template and then, then if you have a problem, you know you have an issue with indicators. So then what you do is you go back and you add one at a time. So with what you've learned in this video, you should be able to now use the playback connection with a lot more confidence that you can get it to work the way you think it's supposed to work. If you have problems, you should be able to work your way through the troubleshooting and work it out fairly quickly. Most of the time when I've had questions, people have asked for me to help them. The information that I've gone over with you in this video is really all I ever need to do to get their playback connection working the way it's supposed to. So you've got everything you need. It just takes a little patience, a little bit of work, and it's absolutely worth doing. And as always, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. See you next time.